Hello, this is Carl Dannenberger, and I wanted to take a look at some of the original pesticides used in turf and touch on product evolution on golf courses. Generally, the original products have been banned and replaced over time with newer, more effective, and lower risk type of products. A good place to start this presentation is with the definition of a pesticide. Shown here is the EPA definition or the current definition of a pesticide. In turf, the major types of pesticides that we use on golf courses are herbicides used to control weeds, insecticides for controlling insect pests, and fungicides used for controlling fungal pathogens. If we look back to the origins of golf and uh, that has persisted over centuries at the time. Most of these golf courses were along the coastal areas of the United Kingdom. These golf courses are commonly referred to as lynx courses. Pest problems most likely did not exist or weren't recognized, except for maybe a foreign plant or so that was controlled by animal grazing. To give you a perspective of how simple courses were managed, a colleague of mine who has since passed, Dr. James Beard, conveyed to me that when he was at St. Andrews researching a book he was writing that he came across a Greens Committee re minutes or report where the point of discussion during this meeting was focused on whether they should replace the sheep who were grazing the golf course. The concern was did constant grazing dull or wear down the teeth, causing of a lack of a clean cut by these sheep? You know, I don't, I don't think that's what happens. But anyway, as golf moved inland and golf courses were constructed on clay soils versus sandy soils that were present along these uh, links or coastal golf courses, Major detriments arose to playing golf with one of those with the presence of earthworms. These earthworm infestations resulted in numerous earthworm casts, made putting greens unplayable for a majority of the year. During this time in the United Kingdom, organic and inorganic compounds were identified that acted as either an irritant of the earthworm causing them to emerge at the surface where they could be physically removed by uh, crew workers on the golf course or some of these compounds acted as being toxic to the earthworms. Pesticide use on golf courses in the United States can be divided in two general eras. Very few pesticides were used on golf courses prior to World War II and then after World War II and into the 1960s, there was a large growth in the number of plant protectants used. Many of the pesticides used from the 1920s to 1960 were characterized as shown here as non-biodegradable, applied at high rates, persistent, and for inorganic materials containing compounds like arsenic, lead, mercury, cadmium, copper, sulfur, or nicotines. These compounds were known for their toxicity to humans. Many of these inorganic compounds had a broad spectrum use. And I'm not talking about just controlling turf diseases, for example. When we think of broad spectrum, we may think it co controls multiple uh, fungal diseases on a golf course. But back in the day with these products, these uh, products had a broad, what I would call a real broad spectrum use. For example, Paris Green, a copper-based arsenic product, was developed in 1814 by two German scientists. It had some real poisonous effects. In the 1960s, it was used in the Midwestern United States to control uh, the Colorado potato beetle in agriculture. In the 1880s, it was the most widespread insecticide in the world. 
During World War II in Italy, Paris Green was widely sprayed to control malaria. Paris Green gets its name from being used once to kill rats in the Paris sewers. Paris Green was also used as a pigment in paints by many artistic painters, including Monet, Renoir, and Van Gogh. You probably would not have uh, uh, licked those paintings, but it gives you an idea how uh, widespread some of these toxic compounds were found in uh, the cultures of the time. Starting in the 1960s, less risk pesticides were developed that were one, biodegradable, two, characterized by short residuals and low application rates, and organic pesticides specific to individual pests, thereby avoiding the use of broad spectrum. Short residual chemicals were a characteristic of these products, which meant they didn't persist for more than one growing season. Due to the development of newer pesticides, many of these older inorganic herbicides uh, saw a drastic, and other, and other uh, products, saw a drastic drop in their use uh, prior to the 1980s when many, like the arsenics, were banned. One of the last products that I remember being banned that was inorganic in nature was Calichlor which is a mercury-based product used for snow mold control. Calichlor was banned in the mid-1990s. Some pesticides developed at or after World War II have been phased out or banned also. A couple of these includes 245T and DCPA. A synthetic auxin, 245T, was developed in the 1940s. It is famous or infamous for being combined in equal parts with the common broadleaf herbicide 2,4-D and is, was known as Agent Orange. Agent Orange was used as a vegetative defoliant in the Vietnam War. In 1970, the government halted its use on food crops and was banned in 1985. DCPA which goes by the name Dactol, was registered in 1958 as a pre-emergent herbicide on turf grasses. In late 1990s, the manufacturing of this product was stopped. Recently, the EPA has issued a letter of intent to suspend the product. Currently, the pesticides developed and used on turf have evolved into being effective, targeted control products 